Now here is where it kind of gets fun, and it's kind of your exit, exit ticket out of this section, is we want to look at all the different types of transformations that we have to our availability so we can obtain a secondary graph. Now, I want to give you an order of how to do these things when you have multiple transformations that could happen. First, we want to horizontally shift a graph. Second, we want to do our stretching and our shrinking. Three, reflect if necessary. And four, vertical shift. I mean, I guess they're all if necessary. So let's imagine I have some f of x equals x squared. And I want to obtain from that graph g of x equals 2 times x plus 3 squared minus 1. Woo! A lot of work. But if we just take it step by step, maybe we'll have some success here. So let's look at our original graph. That's our x squared. A couple of points for reference on there that we are aware of on a graph such as this. 0, 0. We know we have the point 2 and 4. We know we have other points as well. And then likewise, uh, negative 2 and 4. Now, we're using those points to give us a little bit of a reference because my graphing is going to be real similar. So the scale is going to change a little bit. I'll do my best to help as best as we can. All right, so let's look then at what we do first. We do any type of horizontal shifting. Means I take my entire graph and I shift it to the left or to the right. How do we know? What do we determine? Well, that depends on what's being added or subtracted inside the function, what's connected to the x, usually in the parentheses. I see that the entire, every x within the function is being shifted three spaces. Three spaces to the right or three spaces to the left. Yeah, it was that counterintuitive one. So every point shifts over three spaces to the left. So I will have a new graph and let's designate this new graph in pink. So now rather than the point zero, zero, it's going to be the point negative three and zero. Two and four get shifted over three spots to the left. So that becomes one and four negative one and four, roughly right about there, roughly right about there. So that point now becomes negative one and four. This point negative two and four, just as a reference guide, is also being shifted over. So that's being shifted over to negative five and eight, or negative five and four, excuse me. And then from there, we see a little bit of the shifting. Again, reference points are to help us understand a little bit more clearly what's happening to each of these points. All right, we did the horizontal shift. Now, do we have a stretch or a shrinking factor going on? We do, we see this multiplier, it's a two. The two tells us that it's gonna grow or it's gonna be stretched by a factor of two. So every point gets farther away from the x-axis by a factor of 2. Well, I have negative 3 and 0 still here. Well, the 0, twice the 0 is still 0. Twice the y-coordinate over here with a 4 becomes an 8. So I'm going to have some point up here at 8. Likewise, this negative 5 and 4, the y-coordinate becomes stretched twice as far away from the axis, so it becomes negative 5 and 8. So now I have some type of a shifting, or not a shifting, but a stretching at that particular time. So what have we done so far? f of x equals x squared plus 2. This one became a new function which was, well, let's call it some h of x. And the shifting that we did was the x plus 3 squared. Then with this shifting right here, we've added h, i, let's call it a j of x. This became the 2 times 
times the x plus 3 squared. So notice how we've gone through it um, bit by bit. Started off with x squared, then we did the x plus 3 squared, now we did the 2 times the x plus 3 squared transformations based on the order that we have. Next, is there a reflection? In this problem, there is no reflection. There's no negative or change in sign outside of the function that causes me to reflect it about the x-axis or the y-axis. So there's no reflection going on. Next that we have is, the only thing is now we have a vertical shift of a negative one. And what color do I not have left? Let's try, let's try blue. So I have a shift. So every point on that graph is going to come down one spot. So this point, which we said earlier was negative three and zero. Now we have a point that's down there that's negative three and one, negative three and negative one. That point gets shifted down one. So negative one and seven. And likewise, that point gets shifted down as well. So that becomes a point negative five and seven. Connect those points, draw that smooth quadratic function. And this was the entire function g of x equals 2x plus 3 squared minus 1. So it took me four transformations to get from where we started from an x squared, shifted it to our left, three units, stretched it by a factor of two, and then lowered the entire graph by one unit. And so that's how we can use transformations to start with a basic graph and add a lot of complexities to it. But if we do it one step at a time, we'll be able to succeed more times than not.